Okay, uh, playing another very talented team uh, this weekend, playing on the road. Uh, their only losses have been to Ole Miss and Alabama, two very quality opponents. Um, offensively, uh, they're as talented as anybody we've played at the skill position. Uh, they've got a true freshman quarterback in the Murray kid that uh, is dynamic with his feet. Uh, was a great high school player we're very familiar with. We actually recruited him, and uh, he is he's somebody that definitely to, that'll get your attention uh, with his feet. Uh, defensively, John Chavis has made a big difference. You know, he kind of has his stamp on there. They're playing they're playing very hard. They have two defensive ends that I think are, are as good as anybody in our league, and they're they're definitely two guys you got to be aware of from an offensive standpoint. You know, our, our, our uh, talk with our staff and our players is we've got to find a way to, to put together our offense and our defense and special teams and play good in all three areas, and that's our goal moving forward. And, and that's what we're going to need to do to, to beat a team like this on the road. On another note, Stanton Truitt uh, is out for the year. He is going to have surgery on Thursday. Uh, it's been really tough on him. Um, you know, he's battled a lot of injuries. He's, he's a great kid. Um, you know, I definitely feel for him, and you know, he's a dynamic type player with his feet. Um, you know, that'll be tough on us not to have you know the rest of the year. Is that the same shoulder as last year? Yes. Mm -hmm. Initial thoughts on uh, Miles Garrett, as you say, he's one of the more talented guys, and I think he's the most productive pass rusher in the league. So what makes him that good? Yeah, you know, you could tell last year's a true freshman. He just uh, he has that it factor. I mean, he, if he knows his pass, he makes it extremely challenging on him, on you. And last year, you know, he made a, one of the, the difference-making plays in, in our game when he blocked the field goal. Uh, he's actually blocked a punt this year. He's just got the, uh, he just got a knack. He's a playmaker. He's somebody that you got to be aware of from an offensive standpoint because he can change the game. Yeah, uh, you know, he, he did. And, uh, you know, that'll be a big matchup for the game. You know, Sean's a, a year, has a year experience under his belt, so hopefully that'll help. But uh, that'll be a big matchup. How is, how is Sean like me? What's that? How is Sean like me? Yeah, he's still a little banged up, um, but we expect him to play. You know, uh, he showed a lot of guts and a lot of toughness, you know, because we – really were prepared for him not to play. And we got there in, in pregame and, you know, he's he was very determined. I'm ready to go. I can do it. And But uh, it's still a little sore, but uh, we expect him to play this week. How much is there in practice? You know, I think that's going to be the question. I mean, we'll, we'll see how he, how he does. Uh, I, I expect him to practice more than he did last week. You know, I think we're at that point. Um, you know, knowing more about, you know, what's wrong with him and, and all that and knowing a little bit more about him. So we expect him to practice more than he did last week. Where did John be? Would John Wallace be the quarterback? He, he is getting reps in practice. He get, We gave Jonathan reps. Uh, him and Jeremy got the majority of the reps last week in practice. And so we'll continue to keep uh, giving Jonathan Wallace uh, reps at quarterback if he's needed. Uh, he'll also, you know, split time at wide receiver too, but just moving forward. That's what we're thinking. Coach, I'm sure different guys coming in at quarterback in the last game, a lot of it was predicated on Sean being a little bit yep. banged up. Mm -hmm. But uh, seeing different guys come in there, do you think that was disruptive to the offense's rhythm at all? Uh, you know, uh, that's always something you've got to be aware of. But, you know, with the plan that we had moving forward with the information we had, we felt like there were certain things that even if Sean could play, we needed – Jeremy to be able to do and also Jeremy had also the the whole package of the offense too and you know KJ is going to be a, a wildcat guy moving forward I mean we really think that uh, he's got some skills that uh, you know we talked about last week even expanding that package so moving forward not just this year but next year you know he'll be a very good wildcat guy. Because he hasn't played a lot in the second half of several games after, yeah. after doing some stuff in the first half. Yeah. First half, is there any particular reason for that? Yeah, you know, just looking at it, he's the type of guy that needs to be on the field more, and, and not just in the not in the second half, but the first half too. So we got to do a better job of getting him on the field more. What is Peyton uh, Barber's status right now? And with him in yeah. the injury last week, how is the running back lineup kind of? Yeah, well, well, Peyton, we expect him to play uh, this week. There was some questions going into the game. You know, didn't practice a lot and all that, but we do expect him to play. Javon is a guy that gave us a shot in the arm. I think everybody saw that, uh, you know, he did some good things. And so, 
you know, he'll have a bigger role, but at the same time, you know, we'll, we'll see once we get into practice and how everybody's doing. Chris, what has it have been about the series that seems to kind of define the season for both teams after, after this game? And it's a, you haven't gone have a very long history with them, but for whatever reason, the last couple of years, it's really defined the season. Yeah, you, you know, uh, you're exactly right. You know, the first year, you know, we, we went there. Um, we were a team that were still trying to figure out who we were, and that was a big win. And they were playing very good at the time. Last year, uh, you know, towards the end, we had the fumble going in, and we had the fumbled exchange there at the very end when we fought back. And, uh, you know, that was definitely a, a tough loss. So, you know, this is a – it seems like they're, they're very talented again. We're playing at their place. Um, and we need to play well. And that's kind of what I was saying early on, that we got to get our offense and our defense to play well at the same time. And we've not done that yet. And so that's our goal, and that's what we're talking about from a coach's standpoint in, in our players. You know, we felt like Austin had his best game overall last week, and uh, they do some, they did some things up front that definitely caught your attention. So for him to have his best game against that group, you know, I thought that really said some things that could give him some confidence the rest of the year. And, and keep in mind, this is his first year play center, and. Um, so, you know, that, that was very encouraging. And I think he's very encouraged, too. Were, were, there, were there a couple of throws that, that you read of Jeremy not have thrown? You know, like he forced the ball a couple of times. Uh, you know, I mean, Crud, one of the bigger plays in the whole game was the one to Tony Stevens. And, uh, you know, he put it about where it could, could only be. And then, you know, it was kind of a, it was off the Wildcat. And they played it pretty good. Uh, off a, a trick play, so that was that was a big time throw. I felt like, and the other one at the end, you know, he uh, he's just trying to make a play. I mean, he, you know, he'll come back next time and he'll hit his check down, but um, you know, he's just trying to make a play for us. When you're selling out Sean and Jeremy in that last game, I know it was yeah. obviously because Sean was banged up. Yeah. Did that have any effect on the offensive rhythm? You know, kind of. Well, I think that's the the question he asked up there. I mean, you know, uh, at times it could. Uh, and there was one time that I uh, think that. Sean's knee brace was broke and he had to come out and come back in. But, you know, that's, uh, you know, that, that's just the way it was last week. I mean, you know, when Sean didn't, we didn't know he was going to play, that was our plan. And, uh, but I'll say this, we got confidence in Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy's practiced well, better and well and all that. And if he's got to play, he's going to play well. That's our mindset. And, and I know that's his mindset. Yeah. That's Tony Stevens makes that yeah. play, that mm -hmm. plays the last two weeks. How important is that for you guys to see? Yeah, that? Tony's a guy that we've been kind of waiting on. And uh, the last few weeks, you can see he's been more in, in the game plan. And he's practiced extremely well. And he's starting to get that confidence. And, and so that's encouraging for us moving forward because he's a big, uh, you know, tall, fast guy. And uh, so I really like where he's at, uh, you know, the last few games. What did you see when you went back and watched the Red Zone? Because you guys have been so good the yeah. last three weeks. What did you see last week that was a little bit different? Yeah, you know, um, we, we had the close one to Ricardo. It was a boom, boom play that uh, one of our timing throws. Uh, you know, as a coach, when things don't work out, I mean, we got to do a better job uh, putting them in position to, to, to be successful in the Red Zone. And, and that was really the thing that stood out that uh, – you know, we've got to get better in. And i got to do a better job calling plays down there, too. You know, you can always say what if and all that. But the bottom line is when you don't score touchdowns, from a coach's standpoint, we got to help them. And, and that starts with me. And so that's a focus that, um, you know, we're really working hard on that moving forward. And, uh, you know, at times this year we've been pretty good down there. And so, but we got to be more consistent, especially when you're playing the top teams in your league and one or two plays can make a difference in the game. And really, that's that's what happens there. How do you think your offensive line has been performing in the red zone when they get there in tight spaces? Yeah, you know, I think I think overall, uh, from a season standpoint, I think our line has performed solid. Um, obviously, when you're playing against uh, you know better teams, you know you've got to raise your level too. But at times, I think our guys have done that. Coach, when it comes to the red zone calls and and, and the touchdowns aren't coming. I mean, does it get frustrating for you? Is there maybe a tendency sometimes to, to almost force it when it comes to calling the plays? You know, I think it goes back to, you know, you get a plan, and if the plan doesn't work, I mean, you've got to come up with another plan. And, and, you know, we just didn't, for whatever reason, and like I said, I'm going to take responsibility on that. I, we've got to figure out a way to get in the end zone, you know, whether it's throwing or running or, or whatever. And we didn't do it Saturday. 
And so that was that was a big factor in the game. And we would got one touchdown. I think we had one that was either called back or close, but but we got to get in the end zone. And so that's that's our focus. Yeah, what's, the, what's the setup between you and Red on calling those players? Yeah. Mean, does he suggest that you call or does he? Yeah, it, call? It, it's a little both. I mean, it's the same system that we've used for a long time. And, uh, you know, we, we lean on each other. We think alike. And so, but like I said, bottom line is we didn't get in the end zone down there when we should have. Y'all just discussing it back and forth. Yeah, right. right. That's right. Do you look at two for 15 on third down as you put yourself in bad spots on first and second down, or was the execution in, in getting all third down as you You know, when you go two for 15, I mean, I think, I think we were leading the league in third downs. And so, you know, we felt good about um, – the plan and the way we operate and all that, but we just got to get them. And uh, so I think it's a little bit of all of the above. I mean, there was some third down and 10 plus, and any time you're always trying to stay out of that. And, you know, our philosophy usually is third and 10 plus, we don't want to get beat. We don't want to turn the ball over. That's when a lot of turnovers come and all that. But, you know, we got to do better than two for 15 when you're playing one of the top teams in your league. Um, so, you know, that we'll, we'll keep working hard for that. You guys know at this point in the season, you, you would never usually do best on best, but is there any thought that the fact you have Carl Lawson, he, he can really kind of replicate some of what Miles Garrett can do? Mm -hmm. Most teams don't have that luxury. Yeah, well, we, we go fastballs every week against our ones-on-ones, -on -ones. and we usually do it, to, you know, for 10, 10 to 15 minutes um, during the week, and we'll continue to do that, and that's been, you know, our philosophy for a long time, but you're exactly right. Carl is a factor, and, uh, you know, there's no doubt. Is he physically deep through the game? Okay. Yeah, came through uh, great. He just said, I am a little out of shape. And so, uh, you know, he'll get in better shape as he goes. But I think that really helped him confidence wise. And uh, he's healthy and ready to go. How, how hard is it for players to keep getting up and coming yeah. back from disappointment and, and keep the edge you need to have? Yeah, I, I think it's hard. But it starts with leadership. And, uh, it starts with the relationships between players to players, coaches to players, and we're going to keep battling. And we just got to figure out a way to get our offense and our defense to play well during the same game. And I think we can play with anybody if we do that. Yeah, it's the first college football playoff rankings come out tonight. Obviously, Auburn will not be in it. Considering the preseason expectations, how does that feel at this point in the season that you're not in contention? For you, you know, all you worry about is Texas A&M. And, and winning that game, and um, you know that, that doesn't even cross my mind. What's the, go ahead, go ahead. You said last night that you got to get to a bowl game, and that's certainly obvious from, the, yeah. from that perspective. But does the pressure just kind of naturally build a bit when the wins aren't coming? You, you know, we're focused on Texas A&M, and we need to play well to beat to be able to beat a good Texas A&M on the road, and that's our only focus, and that's what we're talking about, and that's what we're uh, preparing for. Did Carl play more snaps than maybe you anticipated, or did you feel like he was just full go and he would? Yeah, no, I, I think it was about appropriate. Coach, you had said you're trying to get the offense and defense to play well at the same time. What's the closest game that you've seen them? You, you know, I mean, it was that, that's 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 probably a good question. I mean, I don't think there's. I think everybody will know when we play good offensively and defensively at the same time, and uh, we hadn't done that yet. Because I know it seems like I asked a lot of special teams questions, but I mean, we heard with, with the wind. <laughs> you know, we heard you, you Could say, be windy. No, no, we heard you say in preseason that you were comfortable with, with Daniel kicking it from six. Have you even you been impressed how good he's been this season? Yeah, I think so. I mean, what did he do? Break the school record? You know, last week four field goals plus fifty. I know from a coaching staff standpoint, we got a lot of confidence in him. You know, when it crosses the. 30, 35, around the 35-yard line, I mean, he, he's, he's going to have a high success rate. He's done a great job. If you really look at the kickoffs, too, he's got to be one of the best place kickers in college football. And I think at the end of the year, I think everybody will see he'll be up for all those awards and all that, and I think that will be very warranted. What's the latest on T.J. Davis? Uh, TJ's still not quite ready to, to roll. You know, we were hoping he would a couple weeks ago, but, but still has, has a few setbacks. All right, Coach. Thank you. Thank you.